Hello everyone, welcome to Together with Ben, Core Java Learning Series 1. In today's lesson, we are going to get started with an array introduction. We just need to understand the basics and the following videos will clarify some other details of the arrays and how we can utilize them in the best way possible. Alright, first let's describe what an array is. It's a type of container that holds a fixed number of values of a single type. The length of an array is established when the array is created. There is not much you can do about changing the size of the array when you create it. But there's always a way to go around that, but it's going to come up in the following videos. So let's take a look at how we can declare array of integers. So declaration is uh, something you can do. And these brackets, uh, by convention, you put them right after the data type, int, array, and array. This is also possible. So say int. Let's check out some other ways we can create array. So we created an array of integers. I mean, we declared it. We can also add short array and we can add a space or not. Let's say shorts. We can also add double, double array. We can also add the object itself. That's something you won't be using much at this point, but something you should know. You can also create string array, strings, or any other arrays you can add. So this is one dimensional array. Going forward, we are going to look at two dimensional and then give you the peek about larger dimension arrays. But we are going to focus on one dimensional and two dimensional to begin with. Okay, that said, let's go to step three. Let's allocate memory of 10 integers. We won't be needing these, so I'm going to delete them. We already declared an array, so we can use that. And we have to use this creation new. I want an int type and I want size 10 in the brackets like that. Or you can create another array like this, array 2, and then new int and size 10. But there is something you should not. This way of declaring size of an array is not really the way you should go. Usually, container is something not set then and there. To go around that, usually the convention most people do, because they are, say, the size of this array is 10, and I don't want anybody to change that, and I want it to become part of the class, and then I want it not to be changed, and I want to give it a name, size, and then I want to give it 10. But we forgot to give it a type, so it's type in. And then I can directly go ahead and change this with size. There, let's also change it here. That way you can see this is final, you cannot change this. Let's continue. So now that we declared it, now write a simple program that stores 10 integers something to take a look into over here we should say arrays are index based so if we have 10 elements so they are going to be indexed so we, these are the addresses of the elements sort of let's say so let's take the first index index 0 is 10 so how can we write it so basically we just need to write the name of our array let's use an array and then put the brackets as usual and then tell which index you want to go to and tell what you want to give it a value. That's it. And then you repeat these steps. Now that we have 10 elements from index 0 to index 9, we can now print out the values. Let's create a string index 0. What, what do we find at index 0? Actually, it's a type of int, but we're going to concatenate it. Let's say index 0 equals and then plus an array and then we have to specify the location index 0 and then we can print this out index 0 let's execute index 0 is 10 so let's continue we can do something like this we can take this right here and then put it into this is out right here and let's see, find out what index 1 holds after making the changes let's execute 
index 1 is 20 and then we are going to have index 2 as 30 so we can just copy this one index 2 index 2 let's execute index 2 is 30 and element index 3 is next to 0 right so we can go up to line 27 and then concatenate it again this time we are going to get index index 3 and then add index 3 and then index 6 is right next to it so let's add that as well let me do this like that so let's copy this line index 6 and let's execute index 0 is 10 3 is 40 and 6 is 70 we can add some space right here and here and let's execute again index 0 is 10 3 is 40 and 6 is 70 continue adding the second row so we are going to concatenate it again index 4 And then lastly, the last row, index 9. Let's not forget to add some space over here and over here. So we can just copy this one. Let's execute. But how can we move index 9 right below index 8? Let's try that. And let's give it a try, adding this much space might move it right below index 8. Let's execute. Alright, so it just means we need two more spaces, two or one. Let's push it right here. Let's add one more space and execute. There we go, index 9 is right below index 8. And we can validate 70, 80, 90 and 100. 70, 80, 90 and 100. 40, 50, 60, and 40, 50, 60, and 10, 20, 30, and 10, 20, 30. Validated. But of course, you are not going to go trouble doing this when you do actual coding. But this is the foundation of how you should get started. We can easily achieve this very same output using the loops, but that's going to come in a little later. That's all for today. Hopefully, you got something out of today's video. I hope you find it helpful. Don't forget to check out the next video that's going to be digging a little deeper about the arrays. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Yeah.